and welcome back from the Red Wall, the Buddha Room, my room. I hope you can all hear me loud and clear this morning. So if you can't, um, just let me know. I hope you can. And I'm so excited, as always, to be with you on a Saturday morning. And today we're going to explore loving yourself. It is still February. It is still the month of love. And I thought today I'm really going to just explore loving yourself. What does it look like? What does it feel like? So many of my clients, um, including me, uh, this has been the work, this has been the struggle, really understanding unconditional love, what it is, and boundaries, what boundaries look like. You know, um, my favorite, one of my favorite learnings from Byron Katie was, I love you, no. I love you, no. So we're going to explore some of these beautiful things this morning, these beautiful empowerments. Um, connecting to self, being your own best company, loving to be with yourself. How does that happen? You know, when I think back on my three-year journey, it's almost four years in August, it will be four years. What I'm most proud of, of myself, apart from ditching the drink, I'm most proud of loving myself. I'm really learning to love myself in ways I didn't think was possible. From the self-loathing, the despair almost four years ago to the joy of living life fully. And, um, and this year, uh, this week actually, I got a, a curveball. I've been, since my teenage years, I've had kidney issues and that, and we had, I had an up and everything was sorted and it's always sort of been at the back of my mind, um, my kidneys and in December, I sought a test, something just told me, you know, having gotten really clear on my body that maybe something isn't quite right, maybe I should just check them and they came up as being, um, challenged that they were struggling and I was put on a diet and I've been doing all the right things and I've been really taking care of me and hydrating and uh, on Monday I went for another test and it came back that they my kidneys had deteriorated even more now in the past I would have gone into despair I would have said to my, my self-talk would have been, why? I've done all the right things. I'm doing all the right things. Why is this happening? It's not fair. What's wrong with my body? Um, I would have gone into hiding. I would have probably downed a bottle of wine, which would have been the worst thing to do. And instead, I, I remembered this beautiful quote that I heard on a podcast from a triathlete when he was asked, what is his biggest um, victory winning in winning? And he say, said that he, um, he has learned to talk to himself versus listening to himself. And when you think back to a couple of weeks ago, my Facebook Live about magic spells, incantations, I thought, yes, here I am. I'm feeling quite down. I'm feeling quite blah and discouraged. I can change it. A diagnosis or a blood result does not mean I need to not enjoy my life. I need to not be happy. I, I need to go into despair. In fact, thank you kidneys. Thank you for showing up because now I know there's something else we need to really look at. And let me just embrace each day with joy and happiness. I put on some music. I danced in my bathroom. I remembered Dr. Lynn McDowell saying, just breathe. And I just breathed. And it was amazing. In a very short time, I'd shifted my state and it was the switch that I needed this week. And that is an example of me choosing the love lens, choosing to talk to myself from love versus despair. 
So let me see who's here this morning. Ah, oh, Flick, oh, it's so good to see you. Uh, thank you. Uh, looking lovely in pink, coral. Yeah, it's the color of love. Well, red, coral, pink, I love them all. Hi, Vicky. Hello, everyone that's here. It's always so exciting to see people come to the Facebook Lives. I know it's not always convenient. You can always watch them later. But today's Facebook, like I said, is really live. It's really important for me. It's a very special one for me because it really is one of the keys in learning to live a life of joy and happiness is learning to really love yourself. So I'm going to ask you the question, what does love feel like? If anybody wants to just pop in something in the comments box, that would be great. What does love feel like? Do you remember? Can you go there? Three years ago, I could go into despair. I knew exactly what despair felt like. <laughs> I, I wasn't quite sure how love felt. Morning, Vanessa. So good to see you. And Tessa. You know, my heart always just goes, oh, yes, it's so good to see people here. And Janet knows what I'm talking about. But more than anything, it's so important to get our messages out there, to, to get World Without Wine out there, to get what we do out there. Because without World, of the, World Without Wine, I wouldn't be here today. That's how my journey began. So start your journey, become a member, be here, be with the tribe, and you'll be carried. You'll be carried with love until you learn how to love yourself. So what does love feel like? The love doesn't feel like. Maybe I can t I can explain it more. Remember when you when you when you really fell in love with somebody, how you felt about that person, where that feeling sat, and how excited you were, and how joyful you were, and you couldn't wait to do things for this person. You would make them a cup of coffee first thing in the morning. You would um, write special letters like I did. <laughs> beautiful poems or whatever, just to make the other person know that you love them. That feeling, that feeling. When have you last experienced that feeling for yourself? And how do you get there? I alluded to it via the triathlete. It's all about how we talk to ourselves. I, in my coaching sessions, uh, in my podcast, not my podcast, my Facebook lives. Uh, maybe that was a Freudian slip that there will be podcasts coming up one day. Um, I often and mostly allude to the power of our thoughts, the power of our thinking, and how our thinking creates our feelings, our feelings drive our actions. So when we are thinking thoughts like, I'm such a loser, I'm always messing up, I can't trust myself, Everybody is against me. Nobody sees me. Those thoughts will create a feeling of self, of lack of self-worth. So we want to create our self-worth. So a beautiful exercise to do in terms of how do I talk to myself and what does love really feel like? How do I feel when I feel love? Is to ask yourself the question, what do I want people to think about me? A lot, of, a lot of the time, especially as people pleasers, we will move from the position of people pleasing, saying things to people just so that we can get some kind of approval back. What do you want people in general to think about you? I remember back in the day, it used to be really important for me for people to think that I was well put together, in control, serene, um, beautiful especially as a young girl, all my worth used to really hinge on that. And of course, we know that we can't hang, we can't keep that forever. It goes, and then what? What do you want your friends to think about you? I wanted my friends to say, oh, she is such a good friend. Oh, she is amazing. I really love Nanette. Oh, my word. 
you know, she's the person you can go to when you have an issue. I wanted my friends to say those things about me. What do you want people in authority to say about you? That was such a big clue for me. My, my bosses, my parents, my doctors, people that had authority, um, pastors, what were they thinking of me? And all the while, what I was doing is I, I, was, I was projecting outward what I wanted actually back for myself. And when I realized that those thoughts and those that I wanted other people to think about me, I could generate them for myself. That was the clue. So it's up to me if I think thoughts of, I am beautiful, my soul is beautiful, my heart is open, I love people, I love connecting with people, I love being with myself. Talking to myself in that way creates an openness. Another way to experience love is really through posture. And I, I spoke about at the Zoom Cafe the importance of how we carry ourselves. It's very hard to be angry or to be in despair when our heart and our chest area is open. But so many of us are always looking down. We're looking down at our phones. We're looking down at our computer. We're looking down at life. We are down on ourselves. So look up, just by looking up, just getting up, looking up, taking different actions. It's amazing what can happen. From a biological level, that is one of the ways we can, we can shift our inner state. So when our inner state is, we are flat, we are not feeling joy, we are demotivated, and this is going to happen. If you are, if you've had unhealthy amounts of dopamine rushes through, through alcohol, through food, and you're taking that away, you are going to have the dips. You're going to start feeling like you're flatlining. At this moment, when you start feeling it, you start feeling the colorlessness of life. That's when you need to really go into your self-love. You need to talk to yourself. You need to talk to yourself from a point of love. It's almost like parenting ourselves from a point of love. So many of us were parented from harshness, from judgment, from the big stick. So it's very difficult to learn how to parent ourselves. Biologically, what I'm asking you to do is to choose your prefrontal cortex over your subconscious, your primitive brain. Your primitive brain that just worries and wants to keep you safe and just wants to, wants whatever, wants you to do whatever's just going to get you feeling slightly better right now. And what the, what the primitive brain remembers, the alcohol, remember, that made you feel good, so just go for that. We want to override that and we want to strengthen our prefrontal cortex. We want to, we want to strengthen that part in our brain where we become, the, our, that, I call it my choice muscle. We want to strengthen our choice muscle. So we are flatlining. We're not feeling great. We're not feeling the love. What can we do? And very interestingly, one of the best things to do is to get into action. Dopamine loves action. So when we understand that our biology, together with what love does to our biology, we can really work together. So loving thoughts already trigger beautiful dopamine hits. It gets us more into action. Think about it. When you're feeling in love with somebody or you have, you've you just felt a real connection to another person and you take action from that point, what does it look like? What does it feel like? It's amazing. It's so much more positive than when we do it from a sense of shame and guilt. I've messed up again. Now I need to overcompensate with my kids. I need to overcompensate with my husband. No, open up, breathe, and take action. Take positive action. What is the positive, one positive action that I took many years ago and I spoke about, I think I mentioned it on a WhatsApp this morning. When I was really, really low, it was what, over a year into my sobriety, and I just had a long period of blah, of just like flatlining, of colorlessness, 
I went to a NIA class and I, I just took the action. I got myself out of bed. I got myself to that class and I danced. And I felt awkward, but people were so happy to see me back. I, I felt the connection, the oxytocin, the endorphins from the dance, the sweating. My brain loved the left and right and uncoordination and getting coordinated and then into flow. I learned that day that I had the power. I have the power to shift my inner state. So whatever you're feeling right now, remember that. How can you shift your inner state? What can you do? That, make, that takes you from this to that. And it might be, for now, it's just breathing and just talking to yourself in a very gentle way and saying, I'm learning, I'm so excited to learn to love myself. I'm so excited to learn to love myself. That's what I'm doing. My brain is recalibrating. And when love comes, journal the feeling, feel the feeling. A beautiful way to get into love is to go into a meditation and just breathe and just feel your body, breathe in, breathe out, feel the breath, and then go into your thoughts and think loving thoughts. Those thoughts that I asked you, what do you want people to think about you? What do you want your friends to think about you. Those are thoughts I want you to think about you and I want you to put them into your brain like incantations. I am worthy. I am lovable. There's nothing I have to do to be lovable or worthy. It is who I am. It's why I'm here on this earth. It's my biggest growth point. I evolve from love. Let me embrace my love. I am learning to love myself. And I know often when I talk about unconditional love and, and moving from the love lens, the love, the heart, um, people think I'm, I'm talking about uh, letting people just saying, okay, so-and-so can just treat me like they want because I'm, I'm moving from love. No, remember Byron Katie, I love you, no. I love you, no. You are the queen of your castle. And the boundary walls are up to you to keep them safe. Who can come in? Who do you let in? What thoughts do you let in? And what do you let out that is not serving you and your castle? You are the queen. So I want you to really drop into that. When we create loving boundaries and we say no, we are starting to talk our truth. When we just agree and, and condone, we are lying, we are people-pleasing. It's a very common uh, defense mechanism. I still catch myself doing that, and then I just say, wow, what, that was quite interesting. You were busy people-pleasing there, selling yourself for oxytocin or for a quick dopamine hit. But what is going to be more longer-lasting is to tell your truth. Like Raya Elias always said, the truth has legs and it will stand up. So tell the truth. But tell it from a point of love versus a point of judgment. And that is, that is a skill that we, have, that we can dance with. Maybe initially it sounds awkward. But when I say to my husband now or my children or my grandchildren, I hear you. I hear what you're saying. But no. No. When, my, when people say to me, why don't you drink? Come on, have a drink. It's so much fun. I'm like, I can see you enjoying it. I can see it's good for you. No, my boundary. I don't have to give any excuses. I don't have to say why. No, or I don't want to. Of our complete sentences. And being, but coming from it from a loving point, is quite different to when we, when we are saying, no, I don't want to, leave me alone, or why are you always making those demands on me? Or what, when we're coming from that point, it's not love. So love is a dance, and love is a dance within ourselves. It's a connection to self. 
and it's also a connection to others. And coming from a point of love is so much more enriching than when we're coming from a point of anger, fear, frustration, people must like me. It doesn't feel good long term. I want you to go for the long term reward. So if you're feeling flat today, get up, breathe, do something, take action. Action is the best hit for, for dopamine. And our brain wants a bit of excitement, a bit of frustration, but then it's happy. Then dopamine is saying, yes, we are alive. Come on, let's go, let's do. And that comes often from taking action. Often it's not about how we feel. Our feelings can often keep us stuck if we are always just doing what we feel like doing. We need to get, say to ourselves, this is the action, this is the love action, and do it. And the feeling will come. The, and the thoughts and the feelings and the actions will start aligning. And you will start feeling your inner joy, your inner peace, no matter what life throws at you, whether it's a, it's a diagnosis that you were not expecting, whether it, it's something that fell through you, whether it's the fact that I'm here and my husband is in Mauritius, we can still find our joy. My joy is up to me. And we often need to find ways to really soothe ourselves with the way that we talk. So soothing ourselves is not like sucking our thumbs. Soothing ourselves is through inner rewards. The inner reward of, I've got you. I hear you. I love you. Let's do this. You got this. I'm feeling flat today. It's okay. My brain is recalibrating. My brain is healing. Get excited about discovering you. And that is really where the work lies. And the, and, the, and the work that I've done in these last three years have all been around learning to love myself, learning how to soothe myself out of despair and out of feeling low and dark, learning how to look up and learning that within me, there are worlds and galaxies. So there are gal galaxies and worlds within you to discover. Discover those, embrace those, get excited about what those are for you and love yourself. When you want to pour that drink or eat those crisps or eat that chocolate, ask yourself, am I coming from a feeling of love? Or what feeling am I coming from right now? And then do the work. What is the emotion that I'm not wanting to feel? What is it that I want to just shove away with food? What is it that I want to just drink away with alcohol? What is it? Get curious. Today, in my world, in Lynette's world, a trigger is a wonderful thing. A um, couple of weeks ago, a, a friend gave me some feedback, and it hit me. It was like, and I was like, wow, that hurt. Why did that hurt? Does she really see me that way? And it was my most beautiful moment to grow and to real, and just to say to myself, yes, maybe she did have a point and I am still growing and I am still learning and it's okay. I am me. I am learning. I am learning to love myself. It's all good. And But the emotion that came up immediately was, I need to fix myself. There's something that's still wrong with me. There's something I haven't dealt with yet. Oh, and there goes the posture. So when you feel yourself really dropping up, you know, um, Dr. Lynn McDala, who lost two of her daughters in a mudslide, and her husband, talks about how she got through that, that time of incredible pain through love through the love that she still felt and had and always will have for her daughters, the love that they have for her, no matter where they are now, and her, and her husband. And she was able to, to dance. She, what she did is she would, she's a chiropractor, so she's very much about our posture, our breast work, and almost being like a, a ballroom dancer. She took the photos of her daughters, each one she would dance with. She would dance with them, feel the love, 
send the love, feel the grief, send the grief, and just dance it. And she asked us in, in her workshop to just be in this posture, this posture of openness, open heart, and breathing, and to listen to her story without going, oh no, how terrible. When I was telling you about my kidneys this morning, what was your first reaction? Was it, oh no, it's terrible for Lynette, or was it, wow, Lynette's got this. It's all good. Can you, can you hold in your posture, can you hold the toughest emotions? And I want you to try them on like beautiful garments, all these different emotions that are out there. I want you to try them on and breathe them, be with them, and love all of it. The good, the bad, whatever life brings. Strengthen your choice muscle before you pick up that glass of wine or you drink another drink or you go on a binge. Take a pause and ask yourself, is this, is this what love feels like? What would love do? Ah, oh, you can hear this topic is very dear to me. Let me see who else has popped in. Hi, yeah, Tessa. Self-love. Love a powerful, warm sense of empathy towards those that you love, including yourself. Yes, Blick. Being willing to do anything for the person that you love, including yourself. And that's so important, Blick, because I often ask the question of myself, and of, of clients that come to me, are you willing to do whatever it takes to get to a place of joy in your life, to kick this habit? Whatever it takes. It can and it can have many forms. It can be coaching. It can be coaching in conjunction with hypnotherapy, in conjunction with dance, in, conjun in conjunction with breath work and good nutrition. It, it has to do with everything. So are you prepared to do whatever it takes? So often people say to me, Lynette, what did you do? You, 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 always, you seem so happy. You seem so at peace. That's what I do. Whatever it takes to get me to a state of peace. Whatever. If I'm not feeling it, whatever it takes. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Janet. <laughs> yeah, posture is so important, as you say. You can spot when a stranger is depressed by the way they hold themselves. Yes, and I, you know, and I see so many children, and now and you see them in the shops, and they're looking at their phones, and everybody is looking down. Everybody is, they, it's COVID that's happening. There's so much happening and that people are so depressed about. But at the same time, we also have a, incredible abundant universe we are at the best time of our lives where humankind is actually coming up with vaccines coming up with solutions coming up with solutions for glo for global warming we can choose to really focus on that or on what we're all doing wrong and we should fix everything and everything is just so bad again what are what are we teaching our children are we teaching our children about posture about that they that they are worthy and looking up, I love that, just looking up, not looking down. Mm. I used to confuse loving myself and being perceived as pious or arrogant. I've had to work at that and don't always get it right. I know, I know, Flick, because I used to think that's narcissistic. <laughs> but what is the difference between loving yourself and a narcissist? A narcissist will put other people down to feel better about themselves. A narcissist will put themselves up versus so that they can feel better compared to somebody else. A narcissist always compares and comes from a point of low self-worth. So loving yourself, yes, doesn't mean you're bragging. It doesn't mean, I mean, I sound like I'm bragging because I'm doing this talk. But it's about coming from a fullness, from a, from, a, from a peace, from the way you talk versus listening to yourself and embracing all of life. Yes, 
if you get anhedonia or work on your posture, they say even smiling will change your body chemistry. I know, I love that new word. And I think that, you know, we, I, I was reading the article, to, and Janet, and I thought, oh, but that's pause. <laughs> I'm going to so use these, this article for my pause talk at our workshop. And uh, anhedonia, yes, that flatlining, when life has lost all joy, when the brain is no longer creating enough dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, cortisol, all of it together to work as an orchestra. We want that. You want an orchestra. Yes. And it's so interesting that our thoughts create our chemistry. Yes, Natasha, it is difficult sometimes when something bad happens to switch to positive. And, you know, it's not about something bad happens and not to feel the bad. I'm like, feel the bad. I felt the disappointment of my diagnosis. I felt it in my body. I was with it. It's about leaning in, surrendering, and then moving through. And when we move through, we move to the joy and we move to the reward of love. So I really want to just emphasize that it's not about just thinking positive thoughts, positive thoughts, positive thoughts. It, it is about feeling all of our emotions, feeling them, being with them, going through them, and getting through to the other side and choosing love every time. Oh, thank you, Flick. Yeah, it does. It opens, you know, it opens the dopamine fountain. Just think about how when you fell in love, how your dopamine was just flowing. Yes, so give a smile. Morning, Annika, so happy to see you here. Give yourselves all a smile. You chose love this morning. You came. And Tessa is saying, self-love is for me a combination of being mild to myself and push myself. Yes, and the wisdom to know the difference. So true, because there is a balance, you know, um, I had to catch this in myself, I've seen it with some of my clients, where they would go and then over exercise, do, do the breath work, but do it beyond what's healthy for their body. So being your own conscious personal trainer, be your own conscious personal trainer, know when you are running excessively or you're exercising excessively just to get that dopamine hit or when you're coming again from a point of love what would lo what does love feel like what does love feel like when i find that combination between pushing myself just enough so that it feels good and it moves me through yeah very important point tessa okay yeah so here here we go at the end of the, my talk today. Strengthen your choice muscle. Embrace the day with love. And uh, I love you. I appreciate all of you. Thank you for being my tribe. And I look forward to my next Facebook Live with you. If there's a topic you want me to cover or you want me to delve in more, uh, please um, direct message me and, um, and I will look at I will look at bringing that topic into my next Facebook Live. All the love. Have a fabulous day. Till next time. Bye.